Jacobina de Rivera. Uh, would you introduce yourself, please? Of course. Um, my name is Jacobina de Rivera, also known as Mistress of Milk. And I am preparing myself to apply for a PhD on sexology and to become a professional dominatrix. Yes, and uh, we are going to talk about sexology and professional dominatrix. Yes. yes. But uh, my first question um, will be about national culture and sexual freedom. Uh, features of sexual life in your country or region. So you are originally from Mexico I am. and uh, from <coughs> Latin America uh, uh, region. Would you tell us um, about sexual freedom and uh, national culture? What the differences between different ca uh, countries in Latin America and uh, uh, sexual freedoms and attitude. Um, I'll say that one common factor in Latin America is related to uh, conserva conservatism and religion. So it's very complicated to have the um, sex education there. It's very. Um, I'll say it's. It's bad, or sometimes it doesn't even exist. And I think that that's one of the reasons why freedom in a sexual matter it cannot be considered as as a freedom itself. Because in order to be able to be free, it's because you know the options that are on the table. But in this in in this case in Latin America, it's a very conservative place. I am Mexican. I am from Querétaro. Is the center of the country and it's considered one of the most catholic uh, cities in the world. So I'll say for example the sex education that I got during uh, my high school even, not, not even before, it was very very focused or get us afraid of what sex was. It was like if you are having sex now you will get pregnant or you will get a disease. And that's about it. So just put a condom and that's it. So we didn't know um, anything about it. We, we just, I remember just seeing like these horrible slices of, so this is, uh, if you get chlamydia, you will look like this. Or if you get AIDS, you will look like this. So I think it was a very terrific experience, that um, type of pedagogy, because at the end, you are curious about it because it's the age. I think like every human you know, during, uh, during all their lives, but especially during teenage, it's very curious about sex. So I think that that type of education can be very dangerous as well because if you live a teenage in this world without any information about sex, because it's not when we're thinking about uh, sex education, it's not the Kama Sutra, what we are talking about. It's, uh, we're talking about how to prevent child abuses, for example. If a child knows what is happening, if a child could be informed what is wrong and what is right related, like sex related, perhaps they will have more uh, tools, to, or we could have more tools to prevent that. Because if, 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 if the children they don't know what's going on. They don't know if it's good or if it's right. So it's not about uh, like other practices or just the pleasure itself that I'm very um, very interested in, but also sex education, guys. Stuff. Um, sex education related to to prevention prevention of, for example, um, child abuse, uh, rapes themselves, like sexual violence. Uh, teenage pregnancies, there are a lot of things that we could resolve with this information, but unfortunately in regions like Latin America it, it's not a thing yet. We are, I think uh, we are fighting for it, we are 
getting there, but it's still there is a lot of work to do. So, and it was, <coughs> I, I guess, it was a reason why you became a sexologist, yes? Also, to know, yeah. to know how to enjoy, yeah? Um, yeah, it, it, I'll say it was more a personal quest, because I, I came from the, one of the most religious and Catholic places, and I also spent 12 years in a Catholic uh, school. So I think like all this information that we got, and I'm also like, I was also in high school when internet started to be a thing for uh, searching information. So I think that helped a lot. And um, then I started to think, to, to have a lot of questions that I didn't know how to answer. Because if you um, search on internet, sometimes you can get a very bad information there as well. So you also need to know what exactly you are looking for in internet. And I was very young, I didn't know. And I just started uh, feeling very curious about this, this uh, field of life. Because, of course, I just started like getting more into uh, sexual affective relations during my life and I wanted to understand what was going on. So I think that's how it started. Um, you said that your culture is so conservative, still, still conservative. Yes, in it spite is. of uh, freedoms, open borders, uh, educational systems, um, internet influence. I'll say. It's um, related to poverty. Uh, Mexico is a, po a poor country, as almost all Latin American con uh, countries are. Uh, for example, 60% of our population, we are 125 million people. 60% of those millions of people, they are in, in poverty. So I think that the lack of, of education is linked to the uh, a strong religious aspect that they also have and it's also uh, related to the conditions of the country itself and to power dynamics as well. So it's very complicated to understand like what it could be the solution for this but I think there are a lot of uh, social mov movements right now happening there that it's helping. They are putting like their two cents in their topic and they are achieving a lot of things but it's still a work in process. A very long one. So, do you think uh, that poverty is um, um, limits limits uh, human sexuality? Yes. And influences to uh, uh, sexual intercourse. Yes. How? Um, what way? I'll say that, um, for example, there are some studies regarding uh, the equality of genders. So, uh, in, in, the, um, the in, in the levels of society where you can see more uh, poverty or you can see like less access to education because facing the reality is that uh, when you are in a level of, of poverty, one of the things like it, Education is a privilege, right? Like getting access to internet is a privilege. When you are trying to uh, feed, I don't know how many persons in your house, right? So there is a lot of sexism as well. There is a lot of object, um, like the, the woman or women, they are seen as objects as well. So I think it's, um, it, 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 it's everything connected. It's very complicated to to see what will be the causes, what, what is the beginning of all this, but I think access, uh, the limit access to education could be a very important one, and it's also related to the assistentialism of some religions in Latin America, that it could jeopardize that education as well. Is it really important to be education, uh, to, to be educated in uh, sexual field or just by uh, uh, to 
educate yourself by experience, sexual in, uh, intercourses, reading books, maybe, oh, okay, uh, by uh, practice, just enjoy this process and... Uh, I think it's very dangerous <laughs> because, for example, a lot of sex education, it's coming from porn itself, for, from pornography, but from uh, what people it's watching on, on the TV, what it's watching uh, in sometimes in, in banned uh, places on the internet, for example. So I think like in general, the, in, in the whole world, there are some uh, countries that they are developing and investing more in sex education now, like for example, the Netherlands. The Netherlands, they start their sex education on the kindergarten, for example, because they have that view of um, avoiding, uh, preventing uh, um, child abuse, for example. So, and there are some others that there is just lack of it, like it, it's prohibited in the countries. And I think the ignorance that we have as a society about it, it's so big that, for example, the first time that the whole anatomic map of the clitoris was shown to the world was in 2003. This means that we went to the moon. We were sending already like some other spaceships uh, to, to find intelligent life somewhere in the space and we didn't know like the, the whole function or the whole anatomic map of the clitoris. So I think that says a lot about how we are as society right now regarding sex, that we have um, put this uh, on the side a lot, of, a lot of things, like for example pleasure, and especially like feminine pleasure, female pleasure, because almost all the, all the porn, it's just focused on, on men, right? And like men practices, men fetishism, men pleasure. And um, coming back to the, to the original question, where it's like, if people, they are learning what sex is about from porn, then we don't know anything about sex. Like, for example, we, we will think that uh, sex, it's just a penetration of, of the vagina by a penis, and that's about it. And that's definitely not, uh, that's a very reduced uh, view of what sex is. So, um, I'm, I believe that it's so important, like sex in, in, in life, it's so important for so many reasons, anatomical reasons, uh, and by um, neurologically speaking as well, the, um, even in the society, right? It's so important that we should be able to talk about it, to learn about it by ourselves, but because like putting our questions openly without the fear of, of, of being judged. And I believe also in the democracy, like, uh, there, there is an artist, very interesting uh, part of, of art that she called it like the uh, clitoracy. That is the, the power of the clitoris, right? And, and all this, um, this art is about is the importance of making the pleasure democratic, that women could reach by having the information, like their pleasure being, um, being the owners of their own pleasure, by knowing their body, by knowing, uh, getting information, like freely um, information, and stop this gap. There, there are some people who call it like the, the gap of orgasm, right, because it is known that uh, men, they reach orgasm way more than women do. And if you have a, a healthy sex life, your life changes, like, completely. So I believe, that's why I like to talk about this, because I believe that if women reach that equality in sex, in getting pleasure, in talking about it, in getting that information, the society will just improve. And uh, uh, we'll be happy. We'll, we will be happier, we will be um, 
Healthier? Healthier. Like, I think it will improve a lot of things and it will bring to the table so many issues that we currently have that, um, that just putting those issues uh, on, on the topic to talk about it will help the society, like, in general. Great.